uh, welcome everyone. I am Roshan Odut, um, and I'm going to be providing this webinar for you about our Master of Financial Innovation and Technology program at Smith School of Business, uh, the business school for Queen's University. Um, if you don't know me, uh, I'm the director of the program. I also am an adjunct lecturer in the program, and I've been with Smith School of Business for five years now in different capacities uh, within our analytics data programs, previously with the MMA program, etc. cetera. Um, and I'm looking forward to talking to you about our MFIT program and here and there more and more generally about the world of fintech as well. At Smith, if you're familiar with us, you'll know that we have been educating business leaders for more than 100 years. Our commerce program was the first commerce program in the country, um, and we just had a, a 100 year celebration recently. What we've done uh, in terms of our methodology for assessing what we need in terms of the curriculum and training that we provide for our students is by really keeping our finger on the pulse to see what industry and business needs uh, from uh, graduates of business schools or graduates uh, of schools. And so you know, keeping all of this in mind, what we've done is we've created a first uh, of its kind in terms of this intersection of finance and technology. And if you actually take a look at our, our website for our graduate programs, you'll see that we have about a dozen professional graduate programs. Of course, we've got our flagship commerce program, our MSc and PhD programs as well, uh, that are more focused on the research side of things. But we do have about a dozen professional graduate programs. And so again, going back to this methodology that we've had um, in terms of keeping our finger on the pulse, seeing what industry needs. Many of you are likely aware of the rapid advance of technology. Um, there's been a huge uptick in terms of our capabilities uh, and what technology can do for us. And this, the advances in technology have affected every industry. And finance is, of course, a one industry that's been affected by it quite significantly. So keeping an eye on this, what we've seen is that there is uh, this need to being able to have someone uh, in terms of competencies and skill sets who understands finance and also technology. Um, and so what is the opportunity that we saw, right? And this is a testimonial from a CEO from McKenzie & Co of Advanced Analytics. And what they said was that, you know, they, there are lots of people who speak the language of business and they had no problem finding software engineers who speak the language of technology. They can't find translators who speak both languages, right? And we see this to be uh, applicable more so as well within finance. So we, we see tons of people who can speak the language of finance um, and we can find software engineers, etc. So if you look at the big banks, you'll have these siloed uh, units uh, where you have the tech or IT folks and then the business folks. They don't really, I mean, it's changing right now, but there has historically been uh, this barrier of not being able to converse with one another in the sense that, you know, one unit, so the finance or business unit cannot understand the tech or IT unit. So we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to fill this knowledge or this gap. And our, our MFIT program um, is really something that provides a, a solution to what we've seen as a huge gap in industry. And so, you know, as I mentioned, employers have seen that there is a need for experts or individuals with training uh, that understand the fundamentals of finance and also have skills in data science and machine learning, right? We see that there's been a rapid advance of fintech, uh, new technologies such as blockchain, our algorithms that allow us to do things like automated investing, and the digitalization of pretty much everything in finance, including capital markets. And so as a result of all of this, um, there is an, a growing need, and our program is designed to help our, our students have a solid understanding of that intersectional uh, play of finance and technology. Beyond the technology and finance piece, there's also a huge component uh, that we don't explicitly state, but that is innovation, right? And so our program does involve training on innovation, training on having an innovative mindset, because when you're working within either a large financial institution or some financial institution or a fintech startup, understanding finance and tech is important, 
but there's also an innovation process that takes place. And so we equip our students with training and knowledge in all three areas. Uh, Jennifer Reynolds is the CEO of uh, Women Corporate Directors Foundation, uh, former president and CEO of Toronto Finance International. She's also a member of our advisory board, and you can take a look at our website um, to see who's on the board, but I'll, I'll talk about our board later on as well. But um, this is what she had to say about our program and its fittingness um, within the Canadian economy. The pace of technological change in the finance, uh, financial services industry has never been greater. As a result, the need for talent that can help accelerate innovation is critical to the success of every organization. The Smith & Fit program is designed to build a pipeline of skilled talent to fill these jobs, which will drive the success of the sector and its critical contribution to the Canadian economy. If you're aware of what Canada's GDP looks like in terms of um, what it's comprised of, and correct, uh, uh, these numbers aren't exact, but about, I believe about 20% of uh, what's contributed towards the Canadian GDP comes from the finance uh, sector. And so these changes that are happening uh, give us a huge opportunity to improve the way work is conducted in the finance space and also to contribute uh, more impactfully within the Canadian economy. So this all sounds great from a very 30,000 feet level. What does that mean in terms of what the program provides uh, in terms of you know, the categories of things that you learn from us? So let's take a look at the foundations for a moment. It is built off of data science, machine learning, and financial technology. So you might be wondering what really is uh, financial uh, innovation and technology. So let's ask a few questions and, and see how we can get around to answering this larger question, right? So when we talk about um, identifying how we can help others invest or lend, we can use technologies or new methodologies within data science to help us. When we ask about the risks and returns, we're really talking about financial analysis. When we want to try to make things better, faster, cheaper, etc., we can use machine learning to do that. FinTech is really taking all of these things together in one way or another um, to really make processes and decision making better within finance. So it really is about technology and finance. Uh, and it's really about knowing how data science and machine learning tools and methodologies work. More specifically, it's being able to apply these methodologies and technologies to activities such as loan pricing, uh, derivative trading, hedging and pricing, risk management, asset management, valuations so mergers and acquisitions, bonds, portfolios and real estate, the prediction of macroeconomic trends, the list goes on. And I jokingly always uh, mention this when I have a conversation about the state of fintech in Canada and the world, and that's that whenever I look at a vertical map of fintech, it's always different. And it's always different because there are more and more sub verticals being added. And that's why this list can keep going on. We've had these traditional activities within finance, but now what we're seeing are things such as open banking, um, we're seeing more and more about automation of X, Y, and Z in finance. We're also seeing the incorporation of new technologies such as blockchain. And we're also seeing embedded finance, open banking. The list goes on. And so our program really tries to capture this uh, in some way or another. Um, when we're talking about the structure of the program, it is a mix of theory and practical application. So our students acquire extensive coverage of the fundamental mathematical and statistical theories and methods, but with a practitioner focus in technology. They do learn financial theory and how to apply them to real world decision making. Beyond the finance and tech and innovation side of things, our students also develop power skills such as strategy, uh, entrepreneurship, as well as entrepreneurship, teamwork, so high performance teams, uh, business acumen, analytical capabilities, leadership, communication skills, and the list goes on. In terms of the evaluations or how we assess our students, uh, these include exams, assignments, team projects, and presentations. Uh, we do have a team component in the program. So at most 50% of your deliverables per course uh, will be based off of team activities. 
our students are placed into three different teams in the program. At the beginning of the program, they're placed in one team and they're in that team for the courses that are in the first half of the program. And then prior to the second onsite, and I'll talk about onsite sec uh, sessions in a moment, uh, they're placed in a, sep in a different team. And the last uh, team that they're in is within the capstone project course, which I co-teach with my good colleague, Shay Dubey. Um, this is a year long class and our students have two options in this class. They can either work on developing a FinTech startup or they can work on a, uh, in a finance innovation project for one of our corporate partners. Depending on students' preferences, they're placed into teams accordingly. Uh, the teams are highly diverse in the sense that um, students uh, in each team ha ca have and come with competencies, skills, and experiences from a wide variety of areas. That being said, the vast majority of our students, I would say about 60% do come from some finance backgrounds. Um, a good chunk, say about 30% uh, or so, or 25% come from an engineering background. And the remainder come from general business, entrepreneurship, or other fields, and are now interested in pivoting into the FinTech space. When it comes to our courses, uh, we can really categorize them into two categories. We have once on one side, this finance innovation and technology bucket. And on the other hand, we have our analytics uh, bucket. For the first one, we have courses such as creating new ventures, uh, designing digital innovation, uh, banking disruptors, so I mentioned open banking, crypto economics and payments, the digitalization of capital markets, auto investing and trading, uh, data privacy and security, which is a very uh, important uh, aspect of developing financial innovations. The team-based project course I mentioned, and of course, corporate financial statement analysis. On the other hand, our students do acquire a significant amount of training in analytics and AI. Uh, so of course they learn about AI ethics and policy. It's, it's important that whatever tools and, and uh, innovations that we develop, that they are ethical in nature. Our students take a course in, act, in the acquisition and management of data, uh, analytic modeling, predictive modeling, and of course, machine learning and AI tools, uh, techniques. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go through my presentation because I'll, I may answer some of the questions that some of you may have, uh, but certainly there will be some time for, for you folks to ask questions at the end, okay? Uh, but please feel free to drop those questions in, in the chat, uh, in the Q&A. There is um, programming involved within our program. You don't necessarily need to have a programming background to take, uh, to be in the MFIT program. We have an, we started onboarding six months in advance of the start of the program. So the students who are starting in January 2024 uh, are already starting their onboarding process. Our uh, analytics professors have created uh, our own in-house modules on Python, SQL, um, and data science. And so our students complete these modules in advance of starting the program. So you don't need necessarily need to have a background in these areas. Certainly, if you want to learn up on these and improve your ability, you're, you're more than welcome to get started right away. Uh, but we do provide these modules so that you can acquire the training that we believe you need to come to this level uh, in, ad in advance of, this, of starting the program, such that when you start the program, we can take you higher and get you closer to being an expert or improving your proficiency. These are some of the other programming languages that are involved. Um, Python mo most frequently, SQL as well are less so uh, SAS and of course Tableau. Uh, by and large, we focus on Python. In terms of the structure as well, um, it is a 12 month program that starts in January and ends in December. Um, we have two week long onsite sessions. The first one is in, Jan is in January uh, in, at Smith Toronto. The second one is in June in Kingston at the main campus at Queen's University. Our classes for the program, with the exception of the June on-site session, uh, are held in, in Toronto at our Smith Toronto facility, uh, just steps away from Union Station and steps uh, north of the CN Tower. Our classes are on one weeknight evening and bi-weekly on a weekend day. Currently, uh, what we have scheduled for the next or the incoming class uh, are classes on Thursday nights usually 6 to 9.30, um, and on every other Sunday. Not every, 
sometimes this uh, the Sundays change. You may have a larger uh, gap in terms of when you have weekend classes, but at uh, but usually these are biweekly on Sundays. Now, in terms of the delivery of our content, what we try to do is we try to equip you with the theory and those things that you can learn on your own through pre-built modules and online learning through asynchronous content. In class, of course, we'll cover the more important things that you need to know and understand. But uh, in class, we do have we do f place a good emphasis, a good amount of emphasis on um, experiential learning within the classroom. And so you can find a lot of activities that will take place, breakout rooms, team meetings, team exercises, simulations, competitions, and the list goes on. Um, so we really try to provide you with a wide variety of different learning opportunities to help uh, all of you um, in terms of uh, you know how you learn so that you can acquire the knowledge and training that you need to be quite proficient in, uh, in FinTech. I mentioned the on-site sessions. Um, you know, these are really a great opportunity uh, to immerse yourself as a full-time student. The vast majority of our students do work full time while they're working. So this is just another way for our students to you know, relive that life of being a full time student. Our program is a full time program uh, while you work, really, uh, but it's just designed in a way that allows you to uh, work uh, and still complete all you need to uh, to to complete a master's degree from Queen's University. Um, in terms of the way that we run our classes, you'll never have four or five classes at a time. The way that we do this is that we have something similar to sprints. So if you come from a project management background, you may know what I'm talking about. So what we'll do is we'll have two courses or so at a time. Um, we'll do a deep dive in those two courses, and then we'll move on to the next set, and then the next set, and then the next set. Uh, all of this with the exception of the year-long project course, that starts in January and ends in December. Okay. Going back to the on-site sessions, uh, these are really a great opportunity for you to network and connect with all of your classmates from program admin like myself and faculty and of course students from other programs. And of course, uh, you get to attend engaging lectures in world class learning facilities. Uh, we do have extracurriculars in the program. Uh, we've recently partnered with Desjardins uh, to provide a suite of Extra, experiential learning opportunities for our students throughout the year. Um, the first one of these is the FinTech Speaker Series events that we have. Some of these that are listed here are ones that we've held previously. Um, we had one for after the crypto winter. We, we thought about having this one after that crash in, uh, in 2021. Uh, we also looked at the digitalization of capital markets with uh, RBC Capital Markets. And we had one in uh, banking, really more about open banking, innovation, and the future of finance. Um, and our program is well connected with the fintech uh, industry, uh, if you will. Um, so everyone from law firms to venture capital firms, um, large financial institutions, new startups, uh, more established startups, etc. And so we have about three to five of these every year. We also have a fintech hackathon. Um, essentially what this is, is that um, our corporate partners or the school will provide our students with an opportunity to solve a, a, a problem in finance. And uh, it's our students hack away over a weekend in teams and deliver presentations. And the top three will receive uh, cash awards. Uh, at, so it's, it's really a great opportunity for our students to test and showcase their abilities. The hackathon is uh, something that happens closer in the fall term. So by this point in time, our students have acquired all the technical abilities and training that they need. Um, and um, you're able to join as a team or as a uh, or join randomly as an individual and we'll place you in a team. And lastly, we have our FinTech pitch competition. And so this is this happens at the end of the year uh, in December, following the conclusion of the, um, uh, the, the year long project course. And we do this uh, purposely so that our students uh, have acquired all the training that they need to actually build a financial innovation or a fintech startup. Uh, we'll have uh, a panel of judges. Some of them may be VCs, um, faculty, uh, other entrepreneurs in, fin uh, in finance and fintech, etc. We will have cash awards for the, the, the top winners. 
and those awards uh, can be used for those students to fund their ventures. Now, all of these activities uh, are primarily focused on providing more learning opportunities for, FinTech, for our MFIT students. And so our students uh, and alumni have the first right of refusal in terms of RSVPing and registering for these activities. And then after that, we do open it up to um, current students uh, at, at Smith uh, and also alumni from Smith. Okay. We do have an event coming up uh, very soon uh, on September 27th at 6 p.m. Uh, it's, uh, it's brought to, to you guys and to us by Desjardins. We're focusing on the digitalization of financial institutions, really taking a look at how far financial institutions have come uh, as a result of all of the technological changes that I've mentioned earlier on. Uh, you would have already received an email uh, for this if you've gotten in touch with us about our program. If not, you're, uh, please go ahead and, and register if you're interested. There's a QR code on the bottom left-hand corner of this slide. Uh, more specifically, who's going to be at, at the panel? So we'll have Abdu Tandia, who is currently the student president of the MFIT class. Um, we'll have Rahul, Rahil Janjua. He is the managing director of uh, investment sciences at, at CPP Investments. Jennifer Rodriguez is an associate vice president at TD. And Uzair Hussein is a managing director uh, of digital trans banking digital transformation um, advisory services with Microsoft. And so we'll have these uh, experts coming to talk about uh, you know, what they're seeing about the changes, what's coming up and what the future holds. Uh, we'll, this event will start off with a key, not a keynote, but an open address by myself and Desjardins. Um, and then I'll hand it over to uh, Abdu to welcome our panelists. He'll uh, engage them in a panel discussion. And then uh, the audience will have an opportunity to ask questions. And then we'll have a networking uh, session for about an hour so you can connect with these uh, well established uh, experts. Uh, our current students and alumni, and of course, everyone else that will be there in the MFIT program team, including myself, will be there as well. Now, beyond what you've just seen and beyond the extracurricular activities, I do want to take a moment to just go back to what we teach in our program. Our students do learn from world-class management, educators in tech, finance, analytics, and AI. And they're also industry specialists and practitioners who teach from real market experience. Here are a couple of examples. You're more than welcome to take a look at our website to see the full list of all of our faculty members. But we've got Dr. Elspeth Murray, who is Associate Professor um, and CIBC Faculty Fellow in Entrepreneurship and is the Director for our Center for Business Venturing. And she teaches our Creating New Ventures course in the program. Dr. Stephen Thomas is the Distinguished Professor in, of Management Analytics and the Executive Director of our Analytics and AI Ecosystem. And he teaches the um, machine learning and AI techniques course to our students. Dr. Lynette Perda is a professor of finance, the RBC Fellow of Finance, and Associate Dean of our MSc and uh, PhD programs. Uh, prior to her uh, ac academia life, she was in, uh, in investment banking. And so her focus is in the banking sector, and she teaches banking disrupted uh, in our class. And for some of you may have attended our last uh, FinTech Speaker Series event. Uh, on banking innovation, the future of finance, where she moderated our panel. Dr. Tina Dason is uh, an established uh, full professor of strategy and organizations, and she is a Stephen J.R. Smith Chair of Strategy and OB, and she teaches our AI ethics and policy course. I mentioned our advisory board uh, previously. I won't go through the entire list. You're welcome to browse uh, online at our at our website. But here are an example, here's an, uh, a screenshot of some of these uh, well-established individuals. In my view, these are the creme de la creme of finance and fintech in the country. We've got folks such as Lael El Haldi, she's the executive director of Fintech Cadence. Um, John Aikman, who's also, who teaches our uh, um, crypto economics and payments class. He's a CEO of Nord AI Analytics. Uh, we've got Jonathan Hunter, global head of capital markets at RBC Capital Markets. Uh, Jennifer Reynolds, I've mentioned, uh, Allison Wolf, CFO and Global Head of Portfolio Management at Oxford Properties Group, uh, Gorang Sardana, Front Office Capital Markets Consulting uh, Leader at, 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 uh, for Canada at Ernst & Young, and of course the list goes on, so please go ahead and take a look, but what you'll see is that they, these folks come with experiences 
and expertise in the different areas of, of fintech that our students need to know about. And that's why we also have Tracy Stern, who is a lawyer by trade, and currently she is a chief uh, legal officer for and general counsel at, and corporate secretary for the Canadian Securities Exchange. Regulation is a very key part of uh, developing innovations in the finance sector. Um, so we want to make sure that our students get in, that we get input from our advisory board in, in terms of providing a curriculum that is best suited for our students and also is one uh, that, that provides the training that industry is looking for. And our students do get to connect and network with these individuals through uh, social activities and networking activities as well. Our career center is something that I wanted to talk about as well. Uh, and I'll touch upon the career management framework in a moment, but we do have a robust uh, career center. Um, Smith has been around for a while, so we do have a strong reputation working with industry partners. And over the past few years, we have been ranked as the number one career center uh, over the past few years. And this is lar uh, largely because of our career management framework, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but our career center does provide a wide variety of different activities for our students. Um, and one of the one of the questions that I always get when I'm interviewing candidates or having a discussion with my students is, well, Roshan, what should I be concerned about? Should I be concerned about getting a new job? Should I be concerned about academics? What should I be concerned about? And because I have so much faith in our career center, I really ask them to focus on focusing on the curriculum and their courses. Uh, I'll be honest that it is a it is a challenging program. Um, at one of the you know best institutions in the country. So there are high expectations that we have for our students. And so I always ask our students to focus on the curriculum and the, and the courses, because I'm very confident that one way or another will help you find or transition into the roles that you want to via our career center or through my network. And so going to our careers uh, management framework, it is a three pronged approach. So we discover, build and launch. We discover your strengths and career options. So we try to ident identify where you're at and you know where you want to go. After once we have this understanding, um, we help you build your skills and personal brand. So we try to fill in the gap of you know some things that may be lacking in terms of where you're at and where you want to go. Right, you're at A and you want to go to B. What's in in between that we need to help you with? And so that's that build stage. And lastly, once we've helped you build your profile up, we launch you into your careers and help you to do this in a wide variety of ways. Because of our sprint model that I mentioned before, I often see our students taking up new jobs and roles while they're still in the program. Um, and we do have a, a large, large number of opportunities available for our students. Some of our students are international students, so you know, they may not be able to work the full, uh, a full-time job. So we do have internships, part-time jobs, et cetera. A wide variety of full-time jobs and opportunities are also listed that our students can can uh, can apply to. We provide all the support and training that you need, um, and we also have one-on-one -on -one advising uh, for our students. We have a dedicated uh, person within the career center that helps our students navigate their professional development side of things. Another advantage of our MFIT program is that uh, it is a program that's been rec recognized by the Vector Institute. Um, and so it's been reviewed by faculty and industry representatives and is recognized by the Vector Institute as delivering a curriculum that equips its graduates with the skills and competencies sought by industry as a complementary program in business. Uh, our students are eligible to apply for uh, the Vector Scholarship, which is about 17, which is 17,500 Canadian dollars. Um, there are some requirements for that. You must have an A minus average in your last in roughly your last two years of your of your study, your post-secondary studies. What happens is uh, we put a call out and then uh, anyone who's eligible given those requirements um, can apply. And then the program, so myself will then make recommendations to the Vector Institute, then they'll assess the files and come to a determination on those applications. Beyond the scholarship, there are a wide variety of other opportunities for our students to take advantage of us being a vector recognized uh, program. So, you know, there are they're different pathways in AI that our students can learn about, uh, various networking opportunities, recruitment events and activities, uh, career support, right? Um, they can access our applied, in, the applied internship programs, 
and I, I won't go through all of this, uh, and this certainly is not an exhaustive list, but our students also joined the Vector Digital Talent Hub, where they do have access to curated job, a curated job board of AI career opportunities from internships to full-time, including restricted postings exclusive to members of the Vector community only. Um, sometimes, you know, we have students who come in uh, completely from a finance background and they move more towards um, the AI side of things. Um, I have seen some of our students graduate and become uh, data scientists at large financial institutions. Um, and it really does depend on what you are looking to get out of the program. And it depends on what you want out of the program. The finance space is huge and the fintech space is getting larger. And so it really comes down to where you want to go. And that's why I always try to get in touch with our students to help them identify that, you know, that piece, where do you want to go post program? And then we can work backwards in terms of guiding them in the right way. Another very neat uh, opportunity that our students have is potentially to have classmates that are uh, former or current uh, Olympians or Paralympians. In 2016, the, the school um, served as exclusive, since 2016 that is, Smith uh, served as the exclusive business education partner for the Canadian Olympic Committee and is a founding partner of Game Plan, which is Canada's total athlete, well, athlete wellness program, which helps athletes plan for success beyond sport. Uh, I completed a master's degree at Smith as well a few years back, and I did have a few athletes in my program and it was a great opportunity for me to learn from them in terms of where they're coming from, their work ethic, et cetera. And so you may see uh, some athletes who are uh, in, your pro in, in the MFIT program. And if not, then you'll certainly be able to connect with those who are uh, former Olympians, current Olympians or Paralympians um, in other programs. We do have a wide variety of uh, activities and events that are uh, Smith wide, and that's your opportunity to connect and 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 learn from them as well. In terms of our network, we do have a large network globally, um, and you know I often say that if you ever travel to any country, you're going to find some Smith alumni doing something neat and exciting there, and so we often have this this board, or, or we try to get people connected with others who are there. So if you're traveling for work or business or for fun you'll be able to find a Smith alum and potentially have a coffee chat or lunch with them there. In terms of their demographics, they're about 34 years of age. Uh, the range is quite large, 20 to 64. They've got about 6.3 years of average work experience, 2.5 management experience, uh, and a little bit more than a third are women. Um, and of course, uh, you'll find that our students come from almost all over the world. In terms of the current MFIT class, we have 31 students in the program with an average age of 32, 6.7 years of work experience, about 20% are female, 80% are male, and we have seven uh, international students to about a quarter of, of, the, of the program. Um, that, the previous year we had about 41 and the previous year we had about 20, and these averages with the exception of uh, male-female ratios are on point about what the demographics of the class looks like. Given the heavy focus globally of FinTech, we are seeing more international students being interested in our programs. And every year uh, we, we have had to increase our uh, more basic requirements, if you will, because we just received so many applications from across the world that we have to um, start to think about what uh, are the minimum requirements. You can see here that uh, citizenship in terms of the citizenships that our students hold uh, come from almost uh, a couple, uh, almost a dozen countries. So we've got, of course, uh, China, Colombia, India, Mongolia, Pakistan, Zimbabwe, et cetera. I mentioned earlier on that a good chunk of our students do come from the finance space. And this list here in terms of where the, the industry is represented really reflects that. I won't read all of these, but you know, it's like consulting, capital markets, pension, uh, VC, uh, risk management, etc. cetera. Uh, so you can see that our students do come from a wide variety of backgrounds, particularly in terms of what work they've already done thus far. All of this sounds great, right? So what does what will this cost our uh, our students? Uh, so for, uh, for domestic students, so uh, Canadian citizens and uh, permanent residents, it's $48,000 Canadian. Uh, for international students, it's 81,000 Canadian. 
Our fees include uh, tuition, books and learning materials, meals and accommodations for on-site sessions in Toronto and Kingston, and all software licenses. Uh, if you do apply and receive an offer uh, of admission, uh, we do require a $2,000 uh, deposit to hold your seat. This deposit is non-refundable, and it's that way because uh, we only have a limited number of seats and uh, thousands of folks interested in our program. Uh, after the deposit, you have three installment payments over the year uh, in January, and then in the summer in May, and then the last one in September. We also have a payment plan where instead of paying a third, a third, a third, you can break down a you can break down a third in each one of those terms into smaller payments. Uh, we do have uh, the Dean's Entrance Scholarship, which is based off of merit. The admissions committee makes that determination uh, by itself, so students do, or applicants do not need to apply. We also have uh, two new scholarships. We have uh, two. We have a merit scholarship for indig uh, for Indigenous folks and a merit scholarship for Black uh, for students who identify as Black. Um, and these are valued at $10,000 Canadian each. And what happens here is that um, after being enrolled, so students must be enrolled in the program, uh, we'll invite uh, folks to, to apply. And then we have an internal awards committee that assesses the, assesses the applications and then informs uh, the winners of these scholarships. And they are merit-based scholarships. We do have a wide variety of other uh, scholarships available through Queen's University. And I would highly encourage you to check those out. There are other funding opportunities as well, such as bank loans, et cetera. And so if you are joining us, I would highly encourage you to try to diversify how you will fund your education. More details on funding your education can certainly be found on our website. If you're interested in getting started, please uh, connect uh, with us right away. Our application advisor, Jen Maher, uh, she's more than happy to help you complete a preliminary assessment so you can be guided throughout the process and help you present a strong case. We don't have rolling admissions and no cutoff dates uh, for domestic students either. The cutoff for international students is has passed, um, so we, aren't accept we are not accepting uh, applications right now for the next uh, class which starts in January 2024 from international applicants uh, but it's still rolling admissions for domestic uh, uh, applicants. We are very close to filling the class. Uh, we will likely have a class of around 60 students that's how many seats we have and we have about uh, a little bit more than 50 seats filled. So if you are interested in getting started I would really encourage you to start your application right away uh, if you're looking to start in January. Um, and you can do that by emailing mfit at queensu.ca and we'll be more than happy to guide you through the application process. Okay, so I'm just going to pull up, um, well, I hope all of that helps in terms of understanding our program, understanding a little bit about the, the FinTech space in terms of what's happening at a very high level. Um, in the project course that we teach, I do provide our students with a sort of rundown, if you will, or a FinTech 101 on what the landscape of FinTech looks like in Canada, uh, a little bit uh, when it's, and a little bit more uh, in terms of the North American space and also taking a, a quick look globally in terms of where Canada ranks in terms of uh, FinTech advancement. So I hope all of that helps. Uh, let me open up the Q&A and see what questions there are and I'll try my best to answer them. While I'm doing this, please feel free to drop in your, your questions here. Okay, so we have a question from uh, someone uh, anonymous. What kind of hands-on tech experience do you get in this course? Is there an opportunity to work on real-world data? Is there an opportunity to work with Vector Institute or Bloomberg Trading, etc.? So uh, whoever asked that question, it's a fantastic question, um, and it's not necessarily a course; it's a program. We have a handful of we have about 14 courses in the program. Uh, through each one of these, you acquire different learnings. But in, in some, you do, you do get to work with real world data. In our Capstone project course, for example, we have corporate partners that will, that are students. Uh, so if, if you do work with, uh, if you do opt to do a corporate project, instead of building a FinTech startup, you will be able to use real data from one of our corporate partners in building a new, new solution. Um, and more data, different types of data is provided because our MFIT program is part of the analytics suite of programs 
which in includes also our MMA and MMAI program, so analytics and artificial intelligence. And here, what we do is uh, we have a partnership with other institutions that provide us with data that our students can use. Is there an opportunity to work with the Vector Institute or Bloomberg Trading, et cetera? So I'm not sure what you mean by working with them, but the Vector Institute provides all of those resources and opportunities that I mentioned there, and those are the ones that you can take advantage of. Um, in terms of Bloomberg specifically, uh, no, uh, but we do have um, an automated investing class where you do uh, create an algo um, and you, you can have a competition there. I've had I've joined our students in these competitions before. We use a platform that, you know, it's sort of like a simulation. You get X amount of money. Uh, you work with your team to build an algo and we run it re in, in real time to see who can make the most money in five, 10 or 20 minutes. It's a fun activity. Uh, we do have Bloomberg terminals at Smith Toronto that our students can use. Um, and that's something that uh, is open to all of our Smith uh, professional graduate programs. Um, in terms of trading, we are also working on partnerships that will give students more access to um, learning about trading and engaging in training, activity, uh, training activities beyond the program. There's something also called the Queen's University Alternative Asset Fund. And it's a fund that was established some time ago by the MBA program. And now all students in the professional graduate programs uh, participate there. Uh, we have real money. It's about 500,000 Canadian that's uh, within that fund. And our students uh, essentially uh, can work on portfolio strategy, operation analysis, et cetera. So you do get to trade in, with real money on real things or make investments on, uh, with real money. Um, to join that, there is an application process. Uh, but what we do at the start of the program is we bring in Quaff in. Uh, we have a very good relationship with them, particularly because there are quite a few MFIT students uh, within Quaff right now. Um, and previously, uh, one of our MFIT students was the president and CEO. So those opportunities are there, but they do come to our on-site session in January to talk about Quaff, what they're doing, uh, the opportunities and positions that are available. Okay, so another question. There wasn't any schedule. Oh, oh let me answer this one. Uh, again, I think it's the same person from uh, Anonymous. There wasn't a schedule online. Will be nice if you can share course and schedule each week. Okay, so let me answer that one first. Um, so we we're, we'll post the schedule as soon as possible. But um, if you take what I mentioned before was that our classes are held every Thursday night and bi-weekly Sundays for the day. So 9 to 4.30 bi-weekly Sundays at Smith Toronto. There's your schedule. In terms of the courses, what I can provide at a high level for you is we try to uh, balance off. So you, you don't just take all of the technical courses at the same time. You take some technical strategy slash business courses as well. Um, but we try to make sure that by the end of the summer, you've completed all of the analytics and AI courses. So that'll be done from the beginning to the end of summer. At the end of the program, you're focusing more on, let's say, more uh, fintech focus or fintech special specialized courses. Uh, and the second part of your question, I'm still in the application phase. Uh, uh, well, I'm not sure what you're trying to say here, but I think the question is supposed to ask um, if you'll be able to participate in the onboarding. Yeah, so it doesn't. We do start our onboarding six months in advance because our program fills up very quickly and we usually have by by midpoint almost a full class. So we start our onboarding then. That being said, we do onboard any student as well who comes in after the fact. Students are being enrolled right now. So we continue to onboard them as quickly as we can. Um, we, the program starts in January. So our students still have months to complete those uh, those activities that we require them to complete as a part of their onboarding. So don't worry if you're if if you are uh, considering an offer or if you're still in the application process, you still have months to be onboarded into the program if you are admitted. Okay, we have a question from Saba. Okay, Saba Jahangir. I'm coming as an international student concerning we are only allowed for part-time opportunities. Do we have any form that can be helpful for us to avail part-time consultancy work related to FinTech, which can definitely be a value uh, addition? So Saba, yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, and I have to check again with Immigration Canada because I believe um, 
the Canadian government has uh, relaxed those rules. So you're, you may be able to work more than part-time hours. I'm not sure if that's still in play, uh, but if it's not, um, yes, we do have uh, a wide variety of different options for our students to take up part-time roles, uh, particularly in FinTech. And so what I do is I try to get in touch with our students early on in the program to understand where they're wanting to go, guide them to the career center and also leverage uh, my network in, in FinTech to help guide our students. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of just reaching out to our partners to say, hey, do you have something like this? And usually they do. And sometimes it's also the case that it, it may not exist, but the partner may want to have something like that. And then those opportunities are created. So some of there's plenty of opportunity for you to do what you're asking to be able to do. Okay. And your sec the second part of your question is, after the program, what recruitment services are available pro are provided by the school, especially with collaborations from partners that will be leading analytics uh, fintech industry? Yeah, so within the career center, we have one dedicated we have a dedicated uh, sort of uh, person that focuses on providing these uh, services just for our MFIT students, right? So you have plenty of opportunity to learn about what's there, um, take up roles with partners or those who are not partners, right? So all of these opportunities do exist. Beyond that, we have a bunch of different activities uh, within the MFIT program and through the analytics suite of programs that our students can also participate in. And because the MFIT program is part of that suite of programs, you do get to attend and participate in the analytics AI type of um, recruitment activities as well. We have recruitment fairs on site as well at Smith Toronto. Another question from Anonymous, is there OSAP funding available for this program? No, OSAP funding is not available for this program at this time. Uh, however, you, as I mentioned, there are a wide variety of other options. So you can uh, apply for scholarships, grants, awards, um, get a bank loan, etc. Uh, so you really need to think about how you want to fund your education. I mentioned before that you do want to diversify how you will do that, um, but uh, certainly there are a wide variety of different options beyond OSAP. Okay, you're welcome, James. All right, so those are excellent questions. Um, and you know, if there's something that's uh, not been mentioned or if you came in later, uh, we will be sharing this uh, video recording with everyone who's registered. I also invite you to visit our website so you can learn more about the program. And of course, if you have any questions or if you're looking to get started with an application, uh, you know, Joe, uh, email us at, excuse me, email, at, uh, email us at mfit at queensy.ca. Um, and if you are interested in uh, attending or joining our uh, next in-person event, here is, here is the registration where you can do that. Again, we'll be posting more of this information online and you would have already received an email about this opportunity. So if you're if you're interested, I, I encourage you to, to register and I'll look forward to seeing you there and learning and talking more about um, FIT and FinTech. Okay. All right, everyone, I really uh, enjoyed having this uh, chat with you guys. If you have any more questions, please get in touch with us. But uh, for now, I'll leave it at that and I hope everyone has a fantastic rest of their week. Um, oh, actually, uh, before we uh, bounce off, Alex, I got one more and uh, one more question from James. So I'll ask, uh, answer this one, and then move on. Uh, what are the hours at which, what are the hours at which we can go on campus and inquire more about this? James, you can. So our office, our, we're usually there nine to five on in the typical business hours. Uh, if you want, you're more than welcome to come and visit. Shoot us an email. Uh, connect with me, LinkedIn, etc. I'm happy to have a coffee chat with you at our facility as well. I'm usually there a couple of days of the week um, and I'm happy to meet with you there to talk more about the program, give you a tour of Smith Toronto if you haven't uh, been there already. And you, and this usually happens um, when I'm about to bounce or, or end the session, a few more questions coming, which I'm happy to answer. Uh, so another one from Anonymous, how long does it take to receive admission once an application is submitted? So as soon as you have completed an application and you provided you provided everything that we need and then you've had then what we'll do is we'll have an interview if you meet all of the requirements once an interview is completed and you have the interview with myself uh, once an interview is completed we usually get a decision to you within a week's time 
So it really depends on how quickly you can move in terms of completing your application. So a cover letter, resume, transcripts. If you're an international uh, applicant, we need the West assessment for those transcripts. And of course, uh, two referees. And so once all of those are in um, and you meet the requirements, you and I can have a, a, an interview. I'd really like to have more of a conversation really to see uh, if there's a fitting fittingness here for you in the program. And the turnaround post interview is usually one week. Uh, okay, James is registered for the September 27th event. James, I look forward to seeing you there. All right, I'll count to, I'll do my infamous countdown to see if there are any other questions. Um, going once, going twice. All right, folks, I hope this was informational and helpful. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Rini. It's Roshan, oh, that's my last name. <laughs> it's a common uh, mix up. But thanks, Rini, I hope this was uh, helpful for everyone. And I look forward to seeing some of you at our next event. Take care and have a fantastic week.